Welcome to another episode of Marketing Cheat Codes. Really excited today to have a, a very interesting guest, someone whom I've run into in our digital asset management circles, Reem Ilasale. Reem, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. I'm really excited. That's great. Yeah, we've got a lot to unpack, a lot to talk about. Uh, you're doing some really great things. I want to talk about you, your mission, and unpack some of your journey. And you've got some really interesting marketing cheat codes that I think with what it is that you do specifically that are going to help content marketing professionals, thus in the uh, us in the digital asset management world, think and always want to continue to learn, think like a student, always be a student, always be looking at this, uh, this space that we're in as an area of learning and growth. So I know there's some really good cheat codes in there. Reem, tell me about you. Okay, uh, so I am an associate professor at the School of Graphics Communication Management, part of a, a really big school called the Creative School, located in at Ryerson University, Toronto, Canada. Um, I come from a little bit uh, um, combined background. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. I have a PhD in paper engineering, chemical engineering and imaging. It's one one title. <laughs> it's not three. Um, I have been working at uh, Ryerson University for 10 years, teaching uh, pre-media courses and teaching the digital asset management uh, course, which is a really unique uh, uh, thing. Um, I am also, I'm holding different position at uh, my school. I'm also the faculty advisor of a student group called the GCM Colloquium, who's actually planning and organizing um, a yearly event connecting industry and uh, student. And this year in particular, they discussed accessibility in the graphics uh, communication uh, management, which was held last week. So this is me. That's awesome. And so I think that's really interesting. I think it's I think it's breakthrough that digital asset management has its own place in higher education. Uh, and then you're specifically in undergrad, in undergraduate school, right? Is there a, is there any graduate level uh, classes at all? No, the School of Graphics Communication is only having an undergraduate uh, program. There is um, a future plan we will to have a graduate program. Um, our school is for it's a little bit uh, unique uh, because we are the only uh, school in Canada that provides for uh, four year and a bachelor program in printing and uh, packaging technology. So my student come from the creative background right. and I'm combining that with the uh, learning of digital asset management, which is something, uh, something unique. Uh, so the way that we teach it is uh, also unique. The other uniqueness also of our program is that we are also part of a unique the creative school, which is the big faculty, which combine uh, uh, creative uh, other creative programs like uh, interior design, journalism, professional communication, photography, film. So we come from the creative uh, background as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. So students, when they choose this, when they choose when they see digital asset management, this opportunity, they're they've got the creative backgrounds. And I've seen some of the work products from your students. I think they're really just very well put together infographics. I've seen that. I've seen some of the other work products in terms of some of their assignments get posted that you've shared. But take me to the point in time when you've, there's a new student who hears about this for the first time. And I know you have some 101 classes, some damn 101 instruction, et cetera. How do new students grasp digital asset management for the first time and how do you introduce them and or even describe what DAM is to a student? Well, that is a little bit, it's uh, interesting and um, challenging at the same time. Um, I introduced uh, students into the world of digital asset management in fourth year. So they already overcome all the um, first, second and third year. They learn every uh, every aspect of the creative uh, background, whether they selected to go to the publishing, packaging or printing or even leadership. Um, so despite 
any concentration that they take my digital asset management course is a, a core course they have to take it in fourth year um, it's really interesting because when when I uh, mentioned the digital asset management they have no idea what this this is about uh, so you can see they are excited, um, but as soon as we dig in, and as you mentioned, yes, we do have one-on-one. So the courses consist of a lecture and lab. So in the lecture, we uh, we take it one step at a time, introduce them to all the fundamental aspects of digital asset management, from the definition to metadata to taxonomy to right management. So everything is every single aspect of digital asset management. And then I take that, uh, so we employ their uh, knowledge in actually learn by doing. We we really um, uh, enforce and embrace the importance of uh, learn by doing. So we in the lab, we actually use that knowledge and ask them to build their own um, digital asset uh, management of an imaginary company. Um, so they did that and uh, they do that. They do everything from the back end and the front end. And that's what's unique about the course that we're doing. And uh, wow. the student gets so excited because they have to do this by, by their hand. That, yeah, that's, that's really, it's, I don't want to say it's hard to grasp, but, but if I would put my, when I go back, when I was undergraduate student, I was, yeah, I learned you know, the business courses, at marketing, all that accounting, finance, and then I also had computer science, et cetera. But to build something that when I think of as a whole category of software as a student, your cheat code here is you have them understand the inner workings, that the business case of it uh, with um, a case study company or a fictitious organization from some industry, you actually build the back end and the front end user experience. It's a all within a 12 week time frame. Yes, and then they also have to evaluate their peers down. So as part of the uh, the assignment, each student, each group, they have to evaluate the other peers uh, uh, down and build a marketing campaign. So I'm, I'm bringing back that creativity background and building the marketing campaign. So that's one thing. The other assignment that you mentioned about, which I have been sharing in social media, is the damn creative. So again, um, I'm trying to connect their creativity background with that technical dry topic of digital asset management. So, And we are the graphics communication management. We communicate with the graphic. So uh, I ask them to employ all of that select a topic in them and then use their creativity to re represent it again in, in a fascinated way. There are many objectives why we're doing this. And one of the things is that I'm thinking about the student as a student. Um, I'm thinking about if I want to point them to a quick resources where they can quickly read about it and actually understand it in one single minute, and it's a visually appealing, this is what I want them to do. This is the infographic. So they are enjoying themselves while they're designing. And then at the same time, they're providing information to everyone to share it with the uh, with the community. So we are checking all the, uh, the points while we're doing this assignment. Wow. And then in there also, so you're thinking, so these students, they're going through the process, all the components of digital asset management. Not all of them had like a business background. They hadn't been out in the, you know, ha having had, you know, some commercial experience, so to speak, with a brand as a creative. So they can't really pull that, um, that firsthand experience and knowledge. And so when they're thinking about, you know, designing GAM and they're thinking about end users, how do you get them thinking user centric in um, in who they're they're building this for? Do you supply them with key user personas, or how do they learn who's actually going to consume the technology? It's it's not an easy an easy way to do it. But I want to uh, point out that part of the courses that the student they have to take they have to take management courses and marketing courses. So they do have some uh, some management aspect for, for it. And also before they take the course, they went already they went into their internship. So they have that aspect, their understanding of uh, the user interface. And yes, uh, the, the thing is that while we're teaching the DAM uh, or during the course, I'm trying to bring them into two different points. They have to think about it from a vendor perspective, like they are an employee 
with a dam vendor, how they going to think about the client, what kind, of, what are the questions that they have to go through in order to understand the client, and also we learn it from the user perspective. If you are a user in a company who's looking for a dam, before you go to a vendor, what are the questions that you need to think about it? How do you uh, how do you think about about that? So. We are actually testing, we're teaching them into two perspectives at the same time. So you actually teach vendor selection processes uh, as well in terms of how, yes. how to fit the technology with with the business need. Wow. Yes. And, yeah. and then do you also get into topics around uh, adoption or change management or actually getting getting the technology put into? Yes. Yes, we do that. Yeah, so there uh, there is one one lecture about the IT infrastructure. So they have to learn about the IT, understand the terms, even though they don't come from a technical background, but they do need to understand or at least become familiar with those terms. And uh, yes, they have to. Uh, there is also a course about the adaptation, business management adaptation, because they maybe end up by being a, a dam manager who will be actually bringing this new technology and then there will be some employee who will have those like hesitation so what are the things that they need to think about when they want to implement it the governance uh, model that they have to think about so yeah we touch base on uh, on this and yes we touch base on the uh, change management so I'm, I'm telling you we all we almost almost Every single topic in digital asset management, we talk about it in, in this course, almost. Yeah, you know, organizational change management is, yes. it, it goes hand in hand with the, with the technology uh, being adopted, uh, being uh, getting that value realization you know, threshold met. Um, so I like that how you don't just sort of teach them into in uh, a certain place and stop. You actually get them to the other side of the delivery of value from the technology and knowing that the, the journey's not over once that you've got the technology selected, put in place, but the, the ongoing humans and technology working together, a success factor. It does. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting. Now there's a lot in there. You, you talked about, um, metadata you talked about taxonomy they've got the business background they're building a dam from scratch this, where do some of the students struggle the most is, is there a common area that's like a that's a topic that's much harder for them to to grasp and or pers persist fast metadata metadata <laughs> It's everyone struggle, but right? it's it's easy to understand, but it's it's a little bit uh, difficult to uh, to understand. Um, so uh, it's always they, it takes them a while until they understand exactly the value of metadata and how is that is going to be connected with uh, with them. But I did I actually teach it in three lectures. So we start with the lecture fundamental. What is it? And then we do some hands on activity. I use toys candies and toys and uh, like other stuff bring it to them and then ask them to build their own taxonomy with lego even also so we did we do that and then we uh, we talk about keywording and the selection of the keyword and what what keyword can be belong to metadata what keyword can be just in the uh, in the keyword and then we talk about metadata uh, methodology like the uh, the sheet that they have to say they have to think um, about so when they select their metadata they have to think about the objective who the user going to be how much is enough so i always ask him to select only 15 metadata field so they have to think about what is the most important metadata field to add there um, so I think, I think yeah. that's a cheat code right there, which is if metadata is one of the hardest areas or hills to climb and get over, your method to help them is leveraging, you said like Lego blocks um, and focus in on a core set of key uh, metadata attributes. Yes. Yes, that's true. That's true. Because as soon as they understand the metadata, everything else is easy. Yeah, what does that light bulb look like when, when it goes off with a student? Uh, it get, they get past the hurdle. How do they? How does their um, their success in the course change? And or what are some of those signals that they put out that they've really grasped the the material? 
So I will I will share with you some of uh, the success story that I, uh, I I get from the students. So at the beginning of uh, I have been teaching this for ten years so far. Uh, every year I see different set of students. I have about an average of one hundred and forty students every year for this uh, for this course. Um, at the beginning, I used to have the, uh, the, 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 they don't understand why we're teaching this. They don't understand the connection between that and the graphics communication. So I always keep changing the methodology until I find, finally reach uh, the level that um, uh, I am at uh, today. One of the success story is that when a student who is already working in an organization approached me and asked me to set up a plan uh, or a proposal with her, so to learn how to set up that proposal so that we can convince the employer to adapt them. So that's that's one thing. I have another student who recently approached me. Uh, she is accepted in an interview with a company for a position similar to a dam manager. And she was so excited because she finally understand the value of digital asset management and now she use it for an interview. I have two students who approach me. One of them is already working with me right now, who are doing a graduate project in digital asset management system. So this is my success that story. Is. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, sometimes as a student, you you take the classes, and you don't always have that in your in your title when you get to the you know the workforce, you know the, the commercial world. And one of the things we're seeing is folks with digital asset management in their titles is, is much more and more uh, very much more common now. So it's great that students can very quickly connect and also you know, the employers as well, having confidence in hiring and recruiting um, students who've gone through the rigors uh, in an undergraduate program. So now let's, um, if you could look into your crystal ball a little bit around the future of where I'm sure you're always evolving your course. Are there any, what are some of the like short-term and or where do you think from a long-term perspective your curriculum could could change? Uh, and what would some of those things be that would impact some of those evolution steps? Perfect. As you can know, we already know about that. The dam, uh, the dam technology is always evolving. So previous year we didn't talk about the implementation of AI in dam, and now it's over and over. It's 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 going. Um, although I touch base on uh, the AI integration into the digital asset management, but I would love to like focus more on on this area as of the future and the industry 5.0 we already there with there is any so i would like to more uh discuss this and the struggle and the barrier that people we still have some people who have that um hesitation on adapting to them so you will always going to have that so this is something that i would like to continue uh focusing on on that the adaptation of metadata that's it's always a, a, a evolving the automation adaptation so these are some of the area that um i would like uh, to focus on the other goal that i am working on at this moment Although uh, the digital asset management is really uh, unique in my school, which is the graphics communication management, but still this, uh, the understanding of the value of digital asset management is not widely understood by the rest of the program at my university. So my future goal is to make sure that every single program in my university understand the value of the digital asset management and implemented in one way or another, in a course, in a lecture, in something. So it, there is a need, there is a, an understanding because we do, we are uh, going into the world where there is a multidisciplinary project, there is the, a small threshold between, um, you will always going to see projects that connect the music with printing or um, interior design with, uh, with photography. The, it's always will be, there will be that connection. So digital asset management is the glue between all of those. So that might wow. future grow. Yeah, that's awesome. So do you? Th so we talked about AI, um, digital asset management being a, a sort of a connective tissue of sorts. Do you do you have maybe currently and or future? Will you have? Do you think in your the background of students is uh, creative? 
um, creative content. Do you teach, uh, is one of the courses around creative development and or uh, content development strategies that that also couples with the technology? Yes, we teach we teach that uh, that aspect. There are a couple of other courses at our school and at the creative school that also focus on the uh, the content uh, implementation. My area of expertise beside the digital asset management is in the pre-media area. So I also teach courses in book publishing and production and ebook publishing. So we talk about metadata. We talk about also I also also bring digital asset management in one way or another in my other courses. Um, so yes, so we, we, we do, we do have that too. Gotcha. Yes. It all builds and works together. So as, as there's advancements, not just in the sort of the technology layers of dam, like we mentioned with AI, but as those, um, there's other disciplined areas of you know, packaging, um, business leadership, digital artwork, uh, publishing, et cetera, as those change too, it's going to sort of impact the, how you would evolve the damn course. Yes. This is, this is fun. Um, <laughs> I might have to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're yeah, more than welcome. <laughs> so um, let's, I, I know there's a cheat code in here around uh, sort of a, if you could give some advice, some guidance to folks that are no longer you know, in a, a student situation in undergraduate school or uh, folks in the business world to, I call it like this, this growth mindset of always be a student, always be learning. Are there some characteristics that you see in students that make them great students that we could, we could ex- uh, offer those to folks who aren't students today, but to, to emulate or think like a student? Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's students who always love to learning, people who always love uh, to be on the top uh, of what is new, what's technology, what's uh, what's that you there will everything is changing and it's changing very fast. So yes, keep learning, <laughs> keep attending uh, uh, event. Um, so one of the things that helped me. A lot with the uh, with my journey with the digital asset management is this because before I knew Henry Seward or before I knew anything I I actually went in every year I look for different books um, event of each almost every single vendor's website. I read blogs, um, uh, try to connect with uh, with uh, with people. So it's and every year I discover something new, and I have to go back again. And um, same with the Henry Stewart um, event. So I almost almost register for every single event, every single course, every single anything that is available online. I take it. Yeah, Henry, so, a great community. It is. So um, not only that, there are other workshops, other events. So keep learning. The, the world is always changing to always adapting. If if you are not going to uh, actually um, connect with people, uh, um, uh, talk to uh, Talk to other people. Go to the um, uh, networking event if there is any uh, networking event. That's all how be visible. Um, that's uh, that's the advice that I always give to the, to my student. Be visible. Uh, be connected. Um, learn more. Read more. Um, that is always going to help. Be visible. I love that cheat code. Now, Reem, your I've seen your class. You've put out work products from your team. Where is a good place? Where can folks go to see? I've seen the infographics. Uh, I love the cr- their creative treatments on those that really uh, illustrate what what Dam is. Where are there any resources, uh, any URLs or links that the audience could go to to check out some of uh, you and your students' works? Yes, we do. I do have uh, a URL. It's at the, at the Dam Creative. It's under the uh, the School of Graphics Communication website, and I can provide you with the uh, with the link. If you go to the School of Graphic Communication website under the Community uh, tab, you will find the GCM four sixty showcase Dam Creative showcase. And I always uh, also weekly post, as you said, um, the most creative uh, project uh, on my LinkedIn under the hashtag Dump Creative. And by the way, there is not only infographic. We have games and we have video. We have TikTok video, which I didn't share yet, but it's coming. That's awesome. We're going to have to put some of those links in the show notes. Are you ever worried that some 
corp, some company is going to steal one of your students' ideas, or that's a good problem to have? Well, I'm hoping not. We uh, were trying to protect uh, the uh, our student uh, work. And of course, everything that we put on the website, we get the permission from the student to share with the, with the industry. I'm hoping if anyone who would like to use any of the uh, showcases or infographic to reach out to me and I will get the the proper permission. My, my students are really um, excited. Um, I know for sure that some of the infographic has been used with uh, other educational professional programs. So we are happy uh, to uh, to help. So reach out to me if you would like to use any of uh, the showcase that we we producing. Perfect. Yeah, they certainly spark inspiration. Reem, thank you so much for coming on Marketing Cheat Codes and sharing some of your story. And uh, it's just inspiring and uh, we'll all be following along. Thank you so much. It's a great opportunity. Really appreciate it.